Is the program successful with autistic kids? Well, that, you know, that, that, this came uh, home to us uh, many years ago when uh, our daughter, after we discovered after she seizured in the third trimester that she had a, a, a tumor in her brain. And, uh, of course, that's really concerning, especially when uh, they had to put her on anti-seizure medication. Uh, with the knowledge that we have uh, and with her lifestyle and her lifestyle choices, she's been able to, to have two other births, and so she now, we have now three grandchildren because of that, and we're grateful for that. But uh, the tumor has not increased in size. It stayed about the same, but we think in association with these chemicals, it had an effect on Charlie and some of his autistic tendencies. Uh, these are managed by reducing the amount of gluten, which is sticky, that causes uh, damage or congestion in the small bowel. It's reduced uh, these autistic symptomologies when we eliminate dairy. And of course, these symptoms are obliviated when we take out protein and restore the alkaline design of the bowel, which there is a definite correlation between the gut the brain of your, 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 your gut and the head. So when we clear this brain, we clear the mind blindness too as well. And we've got several examples of autistic children that have been benefited greatly through this program. Uh, one that came to our ranch, he was uh, Fufi, who was, uh, what, five or six years old. Mm -hmm. He could not speak. He would not speak. He couldn't even ride a bike. After he had been to the ranch for one week, he said his first words. He started riding a bike. All of a sudden, things started connecting mm -hmm. between the gut and the brain. And we see this happen over and over again. And we sure hope we have an opportunity to work with more autistic children. Right now, of course, our main focus has been with children with diabetes. And uh, we want to do more because we know that this program can help so many children. I want to ask Shelley. Do's and don'ts. If, in, in just like a minute or two, what would somebody eliminate? Because people have heard a lot of information. What would you eliminate and what would you embrace? Yeah, that's a very um, easy thing that you can do as a trade off. Instead of vinegar in your salad dressings, which is global, universal, anywhere you go, they use vinegar and oil, right? You would just switch the vinegar for lemon and lime juice. And that's what we do when we go to a Mexican restaurant. We just take the fresh salsa, we squeeze some lime in it, some salt, put a little oil in it, and that's our dressing. So it's really easy. You don't want to take any, any uh, fermented foods into your system, like soy sauce, miso, anything fermented, alcohol. Any of those things are counterproductive for healing. Again, you change those types of foods uh, to our flavor salt. We have a liquid mineral salt that you can spray on your foods for your steam fries and stir fries in place of where you would use uh, soy sauce. We take out breads and sugary uh, desserts, ice creams, and we switch them for puddings made with avocado and uh, almond milk. And we use more natural sweeteners like raw green stevia or this coconut sap sweetener. Again, if we have a high inflammatory condition or a cancerous condition, all the sugars come out. We, uh, we also uh, educate people about Otto Warburg who discovered the cause of cancer in the 1930s as being uh, a situation where the cells uh, lose their oxygen and go into oxygen deprivation and the sugar fermentations are increased. So we do exactly the opposite of that. We increase the oxygen that you receive in your water, in your pH drops that you put in your water. They add nascent oxygen to the bloodstream. And we also pull the sugars out of the system so we don't have so much sugar fermentation. So you want to pull all the high sugar fruits out of the diet and replace with low sugar fruits like the grapefruit, lemon, lime, avocado, tomato, and cucumber. And those are considered our fruits. Um, you just go green. You, just every meal that you eat, you start with what can I eat that's chlorophyll rich. Chlor uh, we actually drink pure uh, concentrated chlorophyll. Which I started yeah, I was ago. encouraging uh, Paul here to drink a half a bottle a day. Dr. Young drinks a bottle a day of chlorophyll, and you can also get that from us at the ranch. There's no better blood transfusion than chlorophyll. The molecular structure of chlorophyll is similar to our own hemoglobin. 
There's only a, a structural element in the middle where, where we get iron in hemoglobin uh, from the center of the molecule and where the plant gets photosynthesis and the, the ability to create chlorophyll and turn green comes from magnesium in the uh, chlorophyll molecule. So we should have a love affair going on with the plants. They give us what we breathe in, we give them what they breathe in. So uh, we, we need to be conscious about our, our uh, rainforests and our earth. This is not just interior environment, but global environment that we want to teach people. That it's much better to live off of a garden than it is a cattle ranch, which takes up much more acreage, and then we have to feed all the cattle to keep this meat thing going. And John Robbins is a great advocate of blowing whistles on things like this. He's got great books, too. He's, he's been one of my inspirations. Diet for America. Diet for a New America. Mm -hmm. He's been very good at bringing this awareness to us in a global sense. So if you go into our books, we'll give you the, the uh, substitution list of what to use instead of this and what to use instead of this. And you don't have to sacrifice crunch and munch and creaminess in your diet. You can have it all. You just need to find out how from the box.